everybody and welcome to Walk the Talk. My name is Dumi Ramila for those of you who don't know me. And if you're new here, hello, welcome, browse around and I hope that you do stay. And if you are an oldie, hello friend and welcome back to Walk the Talk. We are still continuing to speak about health here on Walk the Talk. Um, like I said in the last episode, this topic is very close to my heart because I value health, right? I do. And um, I think a lot of us struggle with it, myself included. So um, we're going to speak about health holistically. And today with me, I have somebody who is extremely healthy in my opinion. And today we're speaking about physical health. And uh, we're just going to dive into why it's important for us to take care of our physical health. This is an area I've struggled with. My weight fluctuates due to a lot of things besides weight fluctuating. There's a lot, um, there's a whole lot of aspects to like physical health and benefits to physical health. So without wasting any time, let's get straight into this one. With me today, I am sitting with Lisedi Masangu. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Mr. How are you, sir? I'm very well. How are you? Man? I'm good, thank I'm you. Good. This guy calls me madam. Imagine, <laughs> he calls me madam. It's, it's a respect thing. It has to be, you know, like, yeah. I, I look at you as someone that I respect, so mm. I think madam is... It's a good way. It's not offensive. It's just uh, <laughs> unique. <laughs> Love it. And you know, Lissetti has this contagious laughter. He's got a thundering laughter. So you will oh, hear gosh. it. I hope he's going to laugh throughout this thing because we'll he's got see. this thundering laughter that I love about him. If you make but, me laugh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm funny. <laughs> um, you see, you're already laughing. Love it. Um, yeah. So Lissetti, I have a few questions for you before we get into it so that we can get to know you a little bit okay, like okay. better. Yeah. So uh, my first one for you is, what is your favorite childhood memory? What is my favorite childhood memory? Mm. Ooh, there's, there's quite a few, hey? Yeah. I think for me, going to the 2010 World Cup, mm. my dad and my brother, sure. my cousin, I think those memories live long in, in my head. I wow. Think, like seeing, I remember we went to like three games oh, when wow. I was like 10 years old. I, that is so cool. You know, like that for me, especially because I love sports, I yeah. love soccer in particular, yeah. that was like one of my favorite, you know, like childhood memories going mm. back to those times, going to the stadium a lot mm. with my dad. So yeah love it that's, that's me in a nutshell you get, to, you get into a taste of like uh, yeah okay this guy's already a, an athletic person yes so. yes the reason you're yeah, here you <laughs> yeah love, it, you love it yeah yeah and um do, are you still living in the same place that you were born in no i'm not mm. i'm not so i grew up in Baklu, mm. um, right, basically here, the yeah. church is, this yeah. was my home church, yeah. I've been here since I was 11, 12 years old, yeah. um, and then I went to boarding school, yeah. and that's when I transitioned out of Baklu, mm. and then now I live in Randburg, the north of Johannesburg, yeah, um, yeah I went to a semi-private boys school, mm. or boys school, and that was a lot for me, mm. um, it taught me how to be away from home, mm. so I've now grown up and I've moved out of my hometown but i come back here for the church because nice you know, man of god and i, I <laughs> men of god i love this place you know yeah so, yeah i yeah. ah, love it love it and i just wanted to ask you this but before you answer this question <laughs> i'm gonna count us down because i think i know the answer to this okay, okay what was the sports you played in high school Let's count down. Three. One, two, three. Rugby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You played rugby. Yeah, that yeah. was my most predominant sports in high school because it was from preseason started in like late January. Yeah. Season only ended like now in August. Mm. So it was like seven months of the year. Mm. So as I just mentioned, I grew up loving soccer primarily. Mm. Then I went to an all boys school and this like the culture mm. around rugby yeah. is just so different. So mm. if you're not a rugby player, then you're almost like rugby or hockey. Oh then wow. you aren't like in the picture You're not the elite. The yeah, literally <laughs> that. So and I don't mean it in like a horrible way. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The the rugby training made me strong. Mm. You know what I mean? It made mm. me like want to go into gym. Like yeah. I started lifting weights at the age of 14. Wow. <laughs> so, wow, that's hectic. 14. <laughs> but you see, like, that was the thing. It was more so I'm lifting the weights to get into the 18s, to ah, get into the high teens. Mm. Can I tell you something funny? Yeah, sure. 
I never played in any of the A teams. Oh wow! I never played in the in the top teams. I was always like a B team, C sure. team player. Never good enough to be there, but I worked hard. Yeah. Every day in the gym from sure. the age of fourteen. Sure. Started doing push ups at thirteen, twelve. Sure. You know, so I was phasing myself into it. Sure. Um, because my brother was the polar opposite. My mm. brother was the superstar athlete to the top academic mm. and like I love him to bits because yeah. if he didn't give me that advice at the age when I was 13 he was in matric yeah. his provincial year of rugby mm. if he didn't say listen if you want to play in these top teams mm. start doing your push-ups and your sit-ups now mm. sure so. and sure wow <laughs> like I think this is true for a lot of us yeah. like we work so hard to try to strive for something and it never happens and that can be discouraging for some of us but seeing you today it doesn't you don't look like you are discouraged by it yeah. and I'm not saying in the moment you were not yeah. but I'm saying like you look like you're very resilient you know and I just want to find out from what you said like did this bring like some sort of comparison between you and your brother did it oh, bring some sort of envy fight so sure. sibling rivalry sibling rivalry yeah. is the word yeah i want one day my mom you must just ask my mom right <laughs> yeah for a good 10 to 15 years my brother and i were on opposite sides sure you know so it was like he like like i'm saying like i wanted to be in these top teams mm. and he was so it was mm. like what does he have that i don't sure you know, so I and he's. If you look at him, he's a much bigger person than me. He's like a good ruler mm. height. <laughs> ruler height, height is crazy. So like, he's a good head taller than yeah. me. So like, and he's a lot wider than I. Yeah. Am. So for me, it was more sort of like, damn, like, do I have to get strong and big and tough in order to get to his level? Mm. And then it got to a point where I was just like, I'm not comparing myself to mm. him. I'm not gonna try and be better than him mm. you know like us together is better than us alone mm. trying to win separately sure. so yeah like <laughs> growing up it was a very yeah you know tough kind of battle between us but mm. now we're like best friends with thick as thieves yeah. like he's literally the one person i go to whenever things are going wrong whenever things are going right mm. he's like I arguably the most important person mm, in my life mm. just because of the role he's played sure. in terms of like even when we were fighting and when we weren't on good terms he always had my best interest yeah. in heart he would yeah. still come and watch my games uh, and be like listen you did this wrong you did this right mm. but you did this excellently mm. so i'm proud of you for doing that mm. in terms of my gymming side he'd be like okay if you do these exercises it's gonna help with your performance here here and here so i was like okay even though you aren't my favorite person right now <laughs> You still are looking yeah. out for me, awesome. even even in your heart. Wow, so. awesome! That's good. That's really good. <laughs> well, I, I I was just asking because I know like I have three siblings, so yeah. that's mm, it can get hectic <laughs> over there. I so get you're it. one of four, hey? Yeah, yeah, I'm the third one. <laughs> I'm the middle child. <laughs> yeah. So um, the last question for this um get to know you um yeah. section is what are two things on your bucket list? Two things on my bucket list. Yeah. That's that's a very good question. Yeah. I um, number one, the and arguably my biggest driving force is to buy my mom a house. Oh, <laughs> I love that. that. That is like. Um, I love that so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Like she is, along with my brother, mm. someone that has really like shaped who I am. Mm. Um, she has time and time again, just been so selfless mm. and obviously we say that's what a mother should do mm. but not all mothers do that that's true and she has just put me and my brother above everything mm. she's accumulated debt mm. she's you know been in very difficult positions to mm. put us through school to get us uniform to get us mm. the newest phones to mm. get us the newest boots when she herself didn't have everything she wanted mm. but she had everything she needed sure and so when i'm in a position where i can say mom here's your your three four bedroom house mm. your grandkids are gonna come and mm. play here that's when i'll be very content with where yeah. i am of course it's not the be all and end all of my mm. life it's on my bucket list mm. it's something that i just you know it's a driving force for me sure. and the other one 
How do I say this? I, I would love to relocate. Oh, when like you say relocate, like outside not, not the yet. country? Re- like outside the country, oh, but nice. not permanently. Yeah. You know, like I want to travel to different parts mm, of the world. Nice. You know, my number one is the United Kingdom, <laughs> um, England, as they call it, yeah. the land of the... The royal, yeah, the ro- the royal land, as they say. Mm-hmm. Um, so my brother is currently living there with oh, nice. his wife. Nice. So it would be nice for me to go and experience that culture. Mm. Um, obviously, grow my business, grow my brand. That side, um, I'd also like to go to the USA, mm. um, particularly Los Angeles, mm. Boston, mm. because I do have some sort of feeling where. I can now grow in mm. that space as well. I already have clients for nice. my brand and that on that side. He's yeah. actually a semi-professional footballer, meeting oh, wow. my training plans. Wow. I went to school with his friend. Oh, That's wow. how I, you know, got network. To, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it was. It's, it's a beautiful one. And the last one is Japan. Mm. The last place that I'd like to stay for a bit is Japan. Mm, why Japan? Well, not that I don't understand why yeah. you would want to go to these other places, but, but like I'm Japan? saying, why Japan in, in um, particular? The culture. Nice. It's very, it's a very respectable place to go to. Right. Um, the food. If you know one thing about me, I love to eat. Eh? Yes. And <laughs> to some degree, eh, Asian food is nice and greasy, mm. but it's got all the nutrients that you need. Mm. You know, just go get a chicken chow fang. Mm at your local Asian shop mm. trust me you get everything you need without excess processed food mm, nice. look at me already going into health I'm I so see. sorry I see. no so it's sorry. okay the reason you're here <laughs> is that and um, based on that just take us through I know you said you started like lifting weights and stuff yeah. when you were in grade 8 I think yeah. 14 and I just want to um, find out and for you to take us through like um, why did you decide that health or physical health was something that you're going to go into? How did it start? So, I've always been big on gym and health. Yeah. Um, I think I have a very reputable past, some would say, <laughs> um, in that space. Mm-hmm. So, I've always been someone that's either on the sports field, in the gym, yeah. you know, always just doing active stuff, you yeah. know, going for runs, all of that. Yeah. And I think, for me, something about fitness just spoke to me. Mm. Something about just wanting to be better Mm. always just spoke to me. I think because at home we lacked financially, I thought I could boost myself physically. Mm. And so sometimes I felt like I was being dragged instead of being driven Mm. to achieving my fitness goals. But because of that, it sparked some sort of passion Mm. and you know, even in a time where people, some people don't know this, others do. If you watch um, the Greatest Love podcast, mm. if you keep up with extremely athletic mm. content, I was recently open about my history in doing recreational drugs, which was like, you know, not a lot of people know that, and you wouldn't yeah. expect it from someone that's quote unquote healthy. Yeah. Yeah. But in the time of me doing all of that stuff, smoking yeah. weed, doing. MDMA, doing ecstasy, doing mm. all of these mm. recreational stuff, mm. I still found a way to be in the gym the mm. next day. Sure. You know what I mean? So being able to do all of that and be in the gym, I was like, surely this can't be normal. Surely mm. this is not just an everyday thing mm. for everybody. Mm. This is something that God has called me to do mm. because even in those times, I was still very cautious about mm. Okay, if I do too much, I won't be able to go to the gym tomorrow. Mm. If I smoke too much, I can't go to the gym today. Yeah. If I do too much of this, I can't go to the gym mm. today. And it got to a point where like, I went back into playing rugby after school. Mm. Yo. And I, I realized that oof, it's, it's a different ball game yeah. out here. Yeah. Yeah. So I needed to push myself even harder, which yeah. led to me like, like reducing my alcohol consumption, mm. reducing my smoking. Mm. So it's always been a thing of like, I'm going to prioritize this. Mm. And okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't regret it and I love what I've done. Mm. Um, it's made me who I am. Mm. So that's why and how I, you know, got into the fitness space yeah. and I chose to stay in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 
Wow, that's that's really really great. And like, um, thank you for sharing uh, that part of your story with us. And if you don't mind, I just want to ask, why did you find yourself like doing, you know, recreational drugs? Like, yeah. was there something specific that led you there, to it? There were a lot of contributing factors. Mm. So obviously, in high school, growing up, I had issues with my brother mm. who's arguably the closest person mm. in my life mm. my parents had divorced when I was four years old mm. three years no four or five years old mm. um, so I never grew up in a loving home quote unquote but yeah. my mom always showed me love and then it got to like my trick mm. where things just turmoil was, was yeah. all over you know and like I couldn't I couldn't breathe mm. because on one side my mom is like said study 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 mm -hmm. we need you to go to the university mm. we need you to do this mm. on the other side my dad is like no I'm not paying my school fees mm. and now sure. I could be um, left out of matric prelims and finals sure. yeah so I needed an escape I needed mm. to to find something that I you know just could get out of my own head and yeah. stop thinking yeah. for a bit and I got mixed up with the wrong people, some of them, but some are still in my life today yeah. because the one really looked out for me in that time. Yeah. And I got mixed up with the wrong crowd. So this started at, at in my trick at like yeah. 17, yeah. turning 18, yeah. when I'm doing all of this stuff. And even in those times, I was still in the gym, mm. but there was just so much going on at home, so mm. much going on in my life that mm. I just needed something to let loose something to just take all the pressure off mm. and i'll never forget the first day i ever did molly and all those other recreational mm. drugs it was like a relief mm. of some sort you know mm. it was like there isn't a care in the world right now mm. about what's going on about me not possibly not writing finals mm. i just i couldn't even be bothered mm. and you know god is so great that I found a way to get into the one of the top universities in the country. Yeah. The University of Pretoria is mm. where I did my undergraduate mm. degree and I still found a way mm. in that tough period mm. to still get into one of the top universities. And I cannot say it's my own strength yeah. that got yeah. me through that. Yeah. When I got the, the SMS or the email to say that I, you know, my application was approved, mm. you know, like I literally was on the verge I actually cried. I'm not even gonna say I was on yeah. the verge of tears because I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, with all the things that happened in that past year mm. where my life felt like it was going down, mm. everything was just crumbling or against me in a mm. sense. I still found a way to get to the top, to mm. end up on top. And mm. so that was something that like, it led me to that path. And, and I'll be honest with you, for the greater part of the last four years, five years, yeah. the recreational drugs was still a large part of who I was. Yeah until February this year mm. where I bumped into the co-host Alyssa yeah. of my you know faith-based podcast yeah. of our faith-based podcast yeah. and you know she helped me realize that a lot of the things that I was doing are not of God mm. you know, until now I can fully say I've given my entire life to God my mm. music the sh things I watch mm. you know the people I speak to, mm. I engage with. So, mm. in a sense, I needed that phase of life mm. to teach me something now. Sure. And I can now appreciate everything that I have. I can mm. appreciate who I am. Mm. Because, say for instance, now my kids one day are doing drugs and they're lying to me. I'm going to know mm. immediately mm. because it's been a part of my life. Mm. I know how you act and how you mm. behave on those mm. substances. Mm start to hide things from your parents mm. and that's one thing that I noticed is when I was doing these things I was hiding things from my mother mm. Mm. and it put a lot of strain on our relationship mm. because I couldn't be honest mm. and honesty is a good foundation of trust of any relationship you know? as well yeah sure. so it was it was very difficult for me to mm. navigate relationships when I was doing those substances mm. I did have a good friend like arguably my best friend who yeah. we were doing these things with yeah he was like a brother to me mm. until i decided you know what, maybe i actually don't really want to be doing this as much mm. and then it was a thing of like oh man come on let's just go out like that peer pressure almost yeah. until we had a fallout and mm. this can only be from god mm. because this was someone that i regarded as mm. close as a brother mm. and it was just like okay this is no longer who i am anymore mm. 
I need to disassociate with yeah. people that are still in that space yeah. that aren't ready to receive what God has called them mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, like that's that's the story behind that. Mm. But I've come out on top. Yeah. I'm <laughs> well clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful to yeah. God for everything that yeah. happened. Yeah. The way it happened. Sure. Because I would not change a thing. Wow. Uh, that's a truly like profound um, testimony. To be quite honest, it's a it's a profound testimony, mm-hmm. and I am glad that things worked out the way they did for oh, you. And you. I I know a lot of people are struggling with things, and when we struggle, we tend to. Um, sort of fall onto mm. something that we need something to fall on and yes you chose um, that path at the time but mm. now uh, would you say you're choosing um, to deal with your stresses to deal with the pressures of life and stuff like that um, through uh, being physically healthy 100% yeah. I think it's one part of it dealing oh. with it in a, in, in a better way it's just one little bit mm. because yes the pressures of life are always going to be there. Sure. And gym is a great outlet. Mm. I'm there anywhere between six to eight times a week. Yeah. Um, sure, that's a lot of times. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it's more days in the week than, yeah. than I'm in the gym, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just one side of it. Mm. The other side is communicating my emotions. I mm. do have a therapist, and mm. Pastor John spoke about this in the service yesterday mm. about... Sometimes, yes, we, we can idolize processing, mm. but for me, I put the work in with my therapist. Mm. Yes, I go and see her, but I do the work myself. Mm. I carry it out in the, con- like the conversations I have with people at the church, mm. people at soccer, people mm. at gym, and I, mm. I try and understand myself a lot more. Mm. So the physical side is just one aspect of aspect it. Of it. Yeah. And um, the troubles of life are always going to be there. Yeah. We're always going to be facing battles. We're mm. always going to be... You know, coming coming up against adversity. Mm. But my brother, my brother often used to say, "Growth comes through adversity." Sure, that's such a <laughs> profound thing. It's just like we're having a lot of profound things coming out today. But that that's so good. Hey, yo, yes. please repeat that one more time. Um, growth comes through adversity. Okay. Yeah, love it, love it so much. <laughs> and talk to me about um, extremely athletic. Es- extremely athletic. Wow. Um, I want to say my pride and joy, mm. my firstborn. Mm. Your firstborn, <laughs> love it. Um, like, I want to talk you through how it even started. Mm. So last year, towards the end of last year, we yeah. had at home, because I'd finished my degree in the middle of the year, so we had spring graduation. So mm. I was home from July mm. right up until the end of the year. Yeah. And when I got home, we had power outages mm. for like days on end. Mm. You know, it was like the power would leave on a Tuesday mm. at eleven thirty. So you know it's not load shedding. Yeah. Only and then I go to gym for four or five hours, mm. charge my phone there, come back, it's still not back. Mm. Like, ish, I needed to create posters mm. for you know or I need to do something. Mm. You know, like I, I just I need to be active in some way. I, yeah. I need to be on social media posting me in the gym. Mm. Even though extremely athletic wasn't a thing mm. yet. I was still posting in the gym mm. and you know the power would only come back on the Saturday. Mm. Sure. So it goes on the Tuesday, it comes back on the so Saturday. That's so many days. Shoot. The struggles of yeah. South Africa. <laughs> My gosh. Yeah. Only South African people would know that. Yeah. Because sure. it's like you bathing with cold water every yes. day. For starters, yeah. you're needing to buy takeout yeah. every day. Yeah, because you is, can't cook. Exactly, which is expensive. Yeah. Or the water's gone yeah. for two, three, four yeah. days. Yeah. And now my mom is coming back with Jojo tanks filled with water, like like big little jugs full of water. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, okay, this this is not okay with me. Like, yeah. I know I can do something to change my situation. Mm-hmm. And so the friend that I was actually telling you about, mm-hmm. The extreme athletic actually birthed with him, so mm. I was like, "Dude, we should actually start something like a brand mm. because we buy all these name brands. We buy Adidas, we buy mm. Nike, we buy Puma. Mm. I want to create something that people can buy from me mm. because these are all lifestyle brands. Yeah. You know, things like Puma and Nike. Like Nike is such a lifestyle brand. You mm. buy Nike because it has the tick. You yeah. know that it's there. Yeah, yeah. So when I started extreme athletic, I was like. I want to start a gym brand mm. that people will know that it is me mm. and buy it for the lifestyle that it brings them. Yeah. And so I just started 
in the gym, I would put my phone on a on a or against the bottle mm. and record myself. Mm. And every day I would do that. I'll just leave motivational, mm. you know, quotes there mm. that I thought about myself. Mm. You know, our our motto: keep going, keep growing. Yeah, is a symbol of perseverance. Mm. You know, when you persevere and you push through that wall, that barrier. Mm. You know, you you get to where you want to be. It yeah. might not be right now, mm. but you continue. If you just chip away at it mm. day by day, mm. and that's what I've done over the past year. Extreme mm. Athletic turned one years old in August. Oh, so. yay. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It, it's been a very difficult year. Yeah. Um, I've learned a lot. Mm. Resilience, mm. perseverance, mm. persistence, mm. all of these things, like, they all mean roughly the same thing, but yeah. in different ways, you just have to apply them, mm. you know? I listen to a lot of sermons mm. and uh, Pastor Stephen Furtick said mm. the one time, he's like, just take the next best step. Mm. You don't need to have the grand plan yeah. figured out and you're going to implement mm. it in one move. Mm. If it means that, for me, just getting merchandise out, mm. like I'm wearing extremely athletic merchandise mm. right now, mm. but at the time it was like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to... I didn't have money. My mm. job at the time wasn't paying very well. Yeah. So I had to go and get a credit card. Sure. So it's, it's, it's a scary thing. You're accumulating debt now. Yeah. But you need to take a risk on yourself. Mm. You need to gamble on yourself mm. winning mm. the battle. Because mm. that's what I've done is that I took a risk. Yes, I got the credit card. Yes, I'm still paying it back. Mm. But now I've got merchandise that people are buying, mm. that people are wearing with pride. Mm. I, saw a vid I saw someone in the gym the other day wearing my shirt. Oh wow. And I was like, I don't ask him to wear it. He bought all three colours that we have. Yeah. And I was just like, that means something to me. Yeah. Because I'm having an impact on yeah. someone's life. It's yeah. not more so about me just making money. Yeah. It's about the impact. Yeah. It's about transforming the way people think. Mm. Since we've started we've had a ninety day challenge. We've yeah. had a mentality series. Yeah. We've had a launch of a website that's coming soon. Mm. Um, I think I don't think I worded that right. A website is coming soon, yeah. not the launch. The launch is coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're working on a spring summer launch oh, you know, nice. for vests, mm. more apparel and caps mm. because it's getting hot now. Mm. We want you to be shaded up, and mm. you know we don't want you to be sweating too much. Mm. So every day is just how can I get better? How mm. can we do things mm. differently? How can we take the next best step? Mm. And it, the journey has just been so I, mm. and I and I love extremely athletic because it encourages me to be a better person. Yeah. You know, I can't be preaching, be an extreme athlete and preaching health if I'm still smoking weed every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. If I'm still doing recreational drugs every yeah. day. If yeah. I'm still and it wasn't every day, like if I'm doing recreational drugs every weekend, yeah. I can't be coming to you saying, Do yeah. me, you need to go to gym yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And saying it's good it's good for your health, yeah. but I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I can't yeah. I stopped drinking alcohol almost 10 months ago now. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a big achievement, Yo. eh? That's a huge achievement. And People try and they fail and, you know, um, not that they shouldn't try again, yeah. but you've been able to do it. So congratulations again, <laughs> okay. again on that. Thank you. The societal pressure for drinking is scary. Yeah. I think it's more so a feeling of being left out mm. than anything. Because... Sure. The FOMO. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Because for me, it was always people are like, Oh, why don't you drink? Mm. You're boring. The mm. Springboks are playing tomorrow. Mm. Let's go. Let's go have a beer. Let's go. And then when I stopped, when I said I actually don't drink, then people are not inviting me to go and watch Springbok games. You know, it's like, do we have to be drunk or do we have to be drinking to yeah. enjoy each other's company? No, absolutely you not. Know what yeah. I mean? So it was like I lost a lot of friends along the way, but I've gained a lot of good people around mm. me. You know, like I'm someone that's learning that there's a, there's a certain power in being alone yeah. and being comfortable in solitude. Yeah. And um, Extreme Athletic has been a very big part of that. Mm. And because I'm so comfortable in my own skin, I mm. can now project my comfort in my skin to everybody else. Yeah, sure. That is so good, man. That is really, really good. And, you know, um, I was like, I posted something on, mm. I think it was WhatsApp or something, mm. um, on my story. And it was the first video I ever made for Walk the Talk, right? Yes. And I always refer back to this video. In this video, I say that Walk the Talk is about people who are not 
only interested in making a difference but in being the difference yes. and having this conversation with you yes. um it makes me feel like definitely you are being the difference you know like the the things that you've done the, the steps that you've taken you've introspected and before you brought out things to people it's mm -hmm. thing that you yourself had to deal with well, right and you said um uh, quoting Pastor Stephen Furtick, right? You were saying that he said, um, you must take the next big step. Yes. Um, sometimes that's all you need to do. Yeah. And I just want to ask you, because you said this has been a tough year for you. Mm. What is that next big step that you took in this past year? In this past year, mm. the next best step, starting from January, mm. excuse me, the next best step was going to get the credit card. Yeah. But the next best step after that was going and doing my research, mm. what are responsible mm. ways to mm. use a credit card, mm. monitor all your transactions, mm. you know, look at where your money's going. I know mm. that's the same thing, but mm. you know, for me, at times I needed to use my credit card to put petrol in my car, mm. to get to the manufacturer, to, pay, to buy oh the shirt. Oh my soul, oh my soul. You yeah. know what I mean? So the next best step for me was, okay, let's get this credit card, let's buy the merchandise, yeah. let's buy the fabric, yeah. let's get the designs in, let's do all of these nitty gritty things mm. and then it's okay, what's next? Mm. So I've got the shirts, I've got this, mm. okay now it's time to market the shirts. Mm. Then I have someone like Gavin who is great behind the camera, mm. who's great doing editing. Mm. He does a promotional video for mm. me mm. before I start a mentality series mm. which then blows up on YouTube. Mm. You know, sure. there's there's ten episodes there. If you want to know the mind behind an extreme athlete, there you have it. Yeah. You're on YouTube, and for me, it was after the ninety day challenge. Mm. What's the next best thing? Mm. Take time to rest because mm. my body was exhausted. Mm. I worked out every day for ninety days, mm. sure. every single day. Sometimes wow. even two to three times a day mm. because I'm doing a home workout. I'm working out in the gym, and then I'll go to the gym again in the evening. Mm. So. After the 90 day challenge, it's what's next, okay, the mm. mentality series. After that, what's next, another photo shoot. Mm. Now we're going to be using the photos from the photo shoot for the website. Yeah. So now all of these things, what's the next best step? Yeah. You can't get that externally. Yeah. No one can tell you what sure. the next best step is. I love that. Only you know. Sure. Only like, and the thing is, for me, there's always that, there was always that doubt. So I'm not mm. going to sit here and lie to you that mm. I was, I was like, fully confident in every single one of my decisions yeah, of because course. that would be a lie. Yeah. There was that shadow of doubt, but mm. the faith overclouded the mm. doubt. The faith was like, okay, I believe that I can do this. Yeah. I believe that if I just push through. Mm. During the 90 day challenge, there were so many obstacles. I yeah. cannot tell you. The main message of that was believe in yourself. Yeah. Because if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in yeah. you? Yeah. It's that intrinsic motivation. You know? Yeah. And after day 60, my tripod broke. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> there, there's always something that comes against you when you're trying to do something great. This is one thing literally, I've said. Literally. Yeah. And it's the small things, you know, like now mm. every time I record, I have to put tape around my tripod mm. to make it sit up. Sure. So like, people don't see that. You know, another, another thing from my mentality, um, from the 90 day challenge mm. was, no one cares about your excuses, mm. only you do. Mm. And that, that's the sad reality. Mm. If you're late for an, like a meeting and you know that you overslept, yeah. you know that you maybe had breakfast late, mm. the people that are waiting for you in that meeting mm. are there. Yeah. They, they you whether you are there or not is they're there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They don't care whether you missed breakfast, you slept in. Mm. They just want you to be there. Yeah. And so that's something that I also had to realize. Yeah. If I don't upload, no one's gonna care. Yeah. I just need to deliver my part mm. and show my consistency, show that I'm taking the steps to become a better individual. Yeah. That is so good. Lissetti, you yes. strike me as someone who is very disciplined, right? Mm. Um, not only like with your physical health, not only with you being in the gym every, you know, I don't want to say every day, but, you know, being at the gym frequently. And I've seen you do other things as, as well, and I've seen the discipline in that. Um, where does that come from? Where does it come from? 
I, I want to say boarding school. Hmm. <laughs> you want to say, but it's okay. Um, uh, you need to explain that to us. <laughs> but first and foremost, I, I, I want to say my parents. Hmm. You know, when, when you're playing outside as a kid and the lights go on outside and they say, you must be home by the time the lights come on. So as soon as the lights are on, I'm running home. Mm. There's no, James, one more goal. There's no, <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah. So it's, it's that little that little thing, that pebble that they throw into mm. you mm. or that little seed that they plant into mm. you that grows. Mm. And, you know, it, it, it echoes mm. when you get to, you know, environments like boarding school. Mm. Discipline was... Sure, because I I would like to say I was a good kid. Yeah. But I obviously did have a bit of rebellion in me mm -hmm. because I was I was an angry kid. Mm. So the discipline came in where you up at six o'clock. Mm. Breakfast is at quarter to seven. Mm -hmm. Inspection is at five past seven. Mm -hmm. You must leave the boarding house at half past seven, at mm. half past seven. Mm -hmm. um, Register for school starts at quarter to eight mm. and classes start at nine mm. and then you have that whole routine for five years mm. and if they can if the prefect cannot flick a coin on your bed your bed is not made correctly sure that sounds like military stuff <laughs> <laughs> i'm exaggerating but like it was that extreme yeah. that like everything had to be done so well yeah. all the time and sure. Your locker, they, they don't just inspect your bed, they inspect your locker mm. where your shirts and your vest for the mm. week are hanging with your blazer. You must make sure that there's order. Your toiletry bag is in the top left mm. or however you organize mm. it. I even remember how mine was. My toiletry bag was in the top left, my towel on top of the locker, you know, all my, you know, my essentials on the top, my face wash, my, you know, my comb, everything mm. at the top. The discipline was drilled into us mm. and respect too because you know, if you don't respect yourself, how can others respect mm, you? True. And I often have this saying, if you cannot lead yourself, how can you lead others? Mm, that's and true. so I learned how to lead myself in those times mm. where it's like, yes, they're monitoring everything I'm doing, but mm. I need to be also coming to the party, yeah. checking off, okay, I've, done, I've made my bed, I've yeah. brushed my teeth, I've done yeah. all of these things. Yeah. And that translated very nicely into my sporting coach because mm. I didn't just do rugby. I did basketball. I did athletics. Oh I did goodness. soccer. I did. I tried hockey. It wasn't for me. I tried cricket. It wasn't for me. I even tried water polo. It wasn't oh for me. Goodness. So like I was disciplined in every regard. Mm. You know, like if you want to be an elite athlete or an elite sportsman, because mm. that was my goal initially mm. when I was growing up to be a professional soccer mm. player. Then I went to high school and mm. then I was like ish. Now I have to be a, I have to try to be a professional rugby player, mm. even though it wasn't my thing. Yeah. And then I just, the discipline faded mm. in those times because I wanted to go to all the socials mm. and start drinking mm. at the age and lying to my mom mm. and, you know, in matric doing what, you know, I just mentioned before. Yeah. So the discipline was there, but it wasn't always consistent. Mm. Mm. And, and would you say now it is? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is. I want to say it is, but it's also obviously dependent on my situation mm. because, you know, I went out this weekend and I wanted to have fun. Mm. My therapist asked me, when last did you have fun? Mm. And, you know, I, I've been disciplined for the greater part of this year. Yeah. You know, no drinking, no smoking, mm. no nothing. You mm. know, I've been very focused. Mm. And I went out and I went to a festival. It wasn't a club, it wasn't a party. Mm. It was like a picnic kind of thing. Mm. There were loads of people there. Mm. It was a good vibe. To some regard, is that still being disciplined? In my eyes, yes. Okay. Because you, you've you now micromanaged something to the point where you don't need it every day. Mm. You don't have to have it. It was a social mm. outing, a mm. social setting. Mm. You're not doing it in your own space. You're not mm. making anybody feel mm. uncomfortable mm. so and, and including myself you mm. know I'm, I'm, I'm working on giving myself grace because I try to be such a perfectionist mm. and with discipline it's often associated with being perfect being consistent being this being that being this but you know it's also about the relationship you have with yourself mm. Mm. discipline is it's important but mm. who are you Mm. when you are being disciplined. Mm. Are you a grumpy, angry, mm. always upset person? Mm. Or are you disciplined in doing your ice baths like I am? Mm. I did that the whole of winter. My goodness. And that was that was one of the most challenging stuff of the year. Yeah. But it was like I'm 
disciplined in that regard. And now that I'm now smoking for the first time in I don't know how long, mm -hmm. does that now take away all the discipline that I've had? Mm -hmm. is, is, it, is, different, is discipline like, you know, tangible? Can you hold it with your hand? Yeah. You, or is it a mental thing? Mm. So that's where my discipline came from and that's how I've tried to be, you know, consistent with it. Nice, nice. I hear that. I hear that I do. And I just want to ask you as well, like, um, okay, um, we've said that obviously if you decide like on a day or whatever not to do the thing you've been disciplined in, it doesn't take away the fact that you are disciplined, right? Yeah. Um, would you say then, in spite of, um, not in spite of, but with you having that uh, disciplinary training from boarding school from mm. your parents would you say then um, you made the decision ultimately like the decision lied with you yeah. because when I think about it there are some people that went to the same boarding school mm. as you that may not necessarily possess the discipline that you have yeah, would you say that um, it's it's ultimately up to an individual yeah. to choose discipline. Literally, like 100%, I can definitely say that discipline is a choice. Yeah. Because I know people that I went to school with, mm. we had, we didn't have the same upbringing, mm. that's for sure, but we had the same principles and the same, you know, values instilled in us in the schooling system mm. who are on a completely different path mm. to I am. Mm. Some people that I went to school with are still somewhat alcoholics. They're still somewhat like excessively using drugs mm. and you know for me I don't want to judge anybody mm. because they're on their own path mm. um, my best friend at the time in high school he's still on a path where I'm not gonna judge him I'm not gonna pass any judgment but he does lack discipline in many rights in mm. many regards but mm. we were literally always together mm. so ultimately I chose to be more disciplined and mm. he chose his own path mm. and no disrespect to him I mm. hope that at some point he we'll see actions do have consequences and choices do come with you know consequences as well mm. so everything that happens mm. stems from that decision that you make mm. and it's daily decisions it's yeah. momentary decisions yeah. it's like yeah. for me this year i stopped eating fast food mm. so that's very difficult it is it is very good yeah. you know, fast food it is I want to just say something. It's it's made and designed to want you to come back for more. Mm. You know, it's, <laughs> it's so sad yeah. how good a McFeast Deluxe for McDonald's mm. is. Because I don't know what they put inside it, but I could eat one every day for the week. Mm. But it's the choice not to eat it. Mm. It's the choice not to go back to it. Mm. And so I haven't had McDonald's in close to three months now wow. but even then that one time that I had it I was with my cousin mm. and we were going to karaoke and mm. he was like dude I don't feel like buying something expensive I literally bought chicken strips and I bought fries I did not oh, buy wow. the burger so it was like okay cool something that is not too processed mm. you know I still micromanage it the only fast food that I do eat is Nando's mm. please go buy Nando's <laughs> That, that is like it's yes. you encouraging us to buy Nando's for me <laughs> you get your protein you yeah. get a salad there you get potato wedges you get very you get rice you get very healthy stuff from Nando's mm -hmm. too so um, if you're looking for an alternative because it's very hard to stop something completely like cold turkey just leave it alone so the, to have an outlet of some regard is nice so mm -hmm. when I drive past McDonald's my discipline just says no just but drive yeah. past, don't drive through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yay, I yay. There's that yeah. thundering laughter. It came out. <laughs> yes, don't just yeah. drive, drive past, don't drive through. Yeah, yeah. Um, you said wow. earlier on that you have clients, right? And you were yes. speaking about your clients. What do you do? What kind of clients do you have? Tell us. Okay, so you want to break down of my clients? I, I want basically what I'm asking you is what is it that you do yeah and what's your client so my client what I do for my clients mm. is I train them physically mm. like I'm not a I don't want to say I'm a personal trainer yeah because I don't have the qualification to say that yeah 
I'm a training partner. Mm. So we're ultimately geared toward the same goal. Mm. So if you're looking for someone to motivate you, encourage you, keep you inspired, mm. keep you in the gym, I'm mm. your guy. Mm. Until such a point where I'm going to be that ruthless personal trainer that's saying, you are paying me 350 rand per session. Mm. I expect you to do X, Y, and Z. Mm. As a training partner, I'm going to leave you with the words of encouragement. I'm going to motivate you. I'm going to keep you, you know, trying to do your best. Mm. But ultimately, if you're going to want to have a beer and do what you want to do on the weekend, that's okay. Mm. We'll come back again the next week and I'll continue to encourage you. Okay. So that that's where I stand now with my mm. clients. Mm. I create training plans for my clients that are further along in their training. Mm. So people that have been gymming for quite a while, mm. um, like one of my clients, the semi-professional player in the US, mm. um, Zach, he is literally already an athlete. Mm. He just needs the program or the training plan that's gonna enhance his strength, mm. enhance his mobility, mm. enhance his agility. Mm. All the things he needs for the sport, mm. I have the knowledge. Mm. I do my research, I'm studying that course right mm. now, personal training mm. um, and you know biomechanics mm. and all the nitty gritty stuff that ultimately help players' performance mm. and people's performance. Mm. I also coach people mentally. Mm. Um, okay. So I always want And you need to elaborate that. So mentality coaching for me is, you know, just empowering you, allowing you to believe in yourself. Right. If you check out extremely athletic content, it's all just winning the mentality. Right. If I can get you to shift your mindset mm. from this is too hard for me to, mm. this is doable, mm. I think we're winning. Sure. You know what I mean? Love if we that. can shift from, geez, I started here, but I'm here now, so I'm going to chill, mm. to we can push further than this, mm. we're good. Okay. So gotcha. I do that with my clients as well, with my, mm. with my training partner clients. Mm. So it's not just words of encouragement. Mm. I want to change the way you think. Mm. I want to instill discipline, I want to mm. instill focus, mm. I want to instill spirituality mm. because those things are ingrained in my mind, mm. like checking out the mentality series, we have topics on accountability mm. accountability is such a big thing yeah. because if you don't have someone holding you accountable you, I know. You know I mean, how many times have I tried a diet or tried to do something by myself and if I slip up, I'm just like, okay, that's it, it's over. It's I don't have to do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's the point? Exactly. I only have one life. Yeah. You YOLO. only have one life. <laughs> you only literally have one life. You know, so like, <laughs> I for me, I want to get to a point where like, I am just helping people mm. and encouraging people because ultimately, if I look at the impact I've had on the people whose lives that I've been mm. around now, it's like, I always just want to encourage people to be the best version that they can mm. be. Mm. You know, people that buy and wear extremely athletic shirts mm. tell me that they're like, I used to go to gym like three, four times mm. a week. I'm now going every day of the week or mm. five days of, of that week. Mm. And then I'll even go on a Saturday morning sometimes. Mm. And I'm like, that for me is like, wow. Yeah. You know, like you've went three, four times. Now you're going five, six times. Mm. But in those times that you're going, are you, I asked them, are you getting better? Do you feel yourself getting stronger? Mm. And a lot of the time the answer is mm. yes. Mm. And I'm just somebody that I'm obsessed with progress mm. because there's power in progress. Yeah. If there's one thing that human beings, as anybody mm. under this planet mm. loves, is to see themselves progressing. Mm. You can be like, I'm a cameraman, but I don't know how to use a camera. Mm. And then you learn how to use a camera and then, wow, you know, I've made progress. Mm. Mm. It's a sense of fulfillment. It's mm. a sense of, wow, I set myself out to do something and I'm getting better at it. I'm not mm. perfect, but I'm getting better. Yeah. And as you're saying that, you know, like you tried the diets, you tried this, but mm. are you getting better? Mm. You know, are you... That's a good question. <laughs> you know, yeah. Are you pushing yourself? Yeah to, yes, you may have messed up, but are you regulating something mm. else really? Got you. Are you regulating something? I love that. I love that so, so much. Um, Lesedi, thank you so much for coming through. We appreciate you. But I, do you have any parting words for us? Um, Maybe to somebody who is 
like me, um, has a weight that fluctuates or starts something and find themselves um, not being able to continue. So there's that level of inconsistency. Um, someone who's wanting to get their physical health on par and be, you know, that yeah. person. Um, would you like to share some parting words with us? For sure. I just want to say, guys, that there are always going to be difficult times. Mm -hmm. There are always going to be difficult moments. Continue to persevere. Have an attitude for gratitude. Mm -hmm. Because when you're grateful for who you are, there are a lot of greater things coming. Mm -hmm. And when you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Mm -hmm. So keep going and keep growing because the best is yet to come. Sure. Love it. Thank you so much, Lisebi, for coming you, through. Man. And friend, I really hope that you've learned something. I hope you have heard, and I hope you're going to do something about it. I am going to link every um, single thing um, that Lisebi is doing, whether it's a podcast, ways to get in contact with him, if you'd like that um, training partner, if you'd like to um, get in contact with him see what he does i'm going to leave stuff in the description box please make sure that you use that you utilize that um you know he's training he's he's studying he's training to become a professional uh personal trainer so i would say get him now before he gets before to the that rates lesson. go higher yeah get him now before it gets there uh but thank you so much friend for sticking through for watching this i hope you've taken something i have and i'm going to be signing up for some Thing. So yeah, next time we talk, maybe I'll tell you. I'll also share my testimony. <laughs> uh, but I'll see you again next week. Uh, this has been Walk the Talk. My name is Dumi Ramila and I love you so much. Goodbye.